Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make these cool word bubbles. Oh my. So the first part is going to be pretty beginner friendly, and then we'll move on to the more advanced stuff. First, go to the effects tab, select effects, and add new fusion composition. With the playhead over your comp, go to the fusion tab, because fusion is life. First up, let's add in a background to size everything. Hit F2 and rename it to canvas. Go ahead and make sure dual viewers are turned on if they're not. And make sure the alpha is turned all the way down on the canvas. Add another background and press 1 on the keyboard to bring it up in the first viewer. While it's selected, add a rectangle mask. Select the rectangle node and add a polyline. We'll use this as the tail. Draw a triangular shape around the center of viewer 1. Select the background node and change the color to white. Now we need to add a border around it. Add in another background and press control space to search for an erode dilate node. Add it in, connect the background to the erode node, connect the mass nodes to the newest background so that we have the same shape. Select the erode dilate and add it to the second viewer by pressing 2. Increase the amount so it's larger than the white. Merge the backgrounds together by grabbing the output of one and dragging it to the output of the other. Bring the merge up in viewer 2. The black is on top of the white. To switch the foreground and the background of the node, while you have it selected, press Ctrl T. Much better. Now we can make a few adjustments. We can go to the rectangle and change the corner radius. And we can go to the erode dilate and change the filter from box to circle. It'll just smooth out the corners a bit more. If you want an oval instead of a rectangle, just select the rectangle and add a circle mask below it. Then delete the rectangle so the circle is the top node. You just need to adjust it after that to get the look you want. It'll be the same steps for whichever one you want, but I'm going to stick with the rectangle. Let's clean up our nodes a bit and add in a text node. Merge it into the first merge and clean the nodes up. Take the output of the second merge and add it to the main comp. Now bring up the media out in viewer 2 so we can see everything. Add in some text. You won't see it because it's white, so we'll change it to black. Change the font or whatever else you want. To make the tail a little more interesting, select the polyline and grab the handles to change the shape. To move a single handle, hold control, then drag it. You can also change the width and height of the rectangle to make it a little bit nicer. Hit control space and add in a transform node after merge 3 to size and move everything together. Now you're good to stop there if that's all you want, but what if we want the bubble to actually resize with our text? To do that, we're going to need to use some expressions. We're going to use the domain of definition. To view this, let's bring our text into viewer 1, right click and go to region, show DOD. You'll notice four values, an X coordinate followed by a Y coordinate in the order of 1, 2, 3, 4. This is what we need for our expression to drive the size of the bubble. I find it's easiest to use Notepad for this. Our expression will be text1, because that's the node we want the info from, dot .output, because we want the output values of the node, dot data window 3 We're going to use 3 minus 1 to get the center value. But this is in pixels, so we need to convert it to the 0 to 1 scale that Fusion uses. So we'll divide everything by text1.output.width. To make the expression work properly, make sure you have the minus section put in parentheses before the division. Now copy the expression, right click on the rectangle's width, add expression, and paste the expression in. Now our bubble will resize with our text. It's really close to the edges though, so let's fix that. Put the completed expression in parentheses and add 0.1, or whatever value you feel is best. Paste the new expression in, and there you go. There's some extra space between the text and the bubble edges. Now to do it for the y direction, just copy and paste the expression we have. But we'll have to change it to our y values. Change 3 to 4, and 1 to 2. And change width to height. Add an expression to height, and paste it in. Now the bubble scales with height too. Notice that you actually need to add a letter to a new row before the bubble will actually display properly. That's because the DOD of the text won't resize until there's a letter added. The last thing you might want to do is adjust the tail placement. Right now it doesn't move with the bubble, and if that's what you want, that's okay. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and do it. First let's rename the polyline to tail, just so we know what's what, and add an expression to the center. Notice that this is a bit different. Instead of width and height being separate, it's a point system, with x being the first value and y being the second. This is the equation I used. It's similar to the previous ones. We have the same x expression, but with a multiplier to help it move correctly, you'll see in a second, and an offset like we used before. Then we have a y expression, again with a multiplier and an offset. And this is all inside that point expression. We have our x point, comma, y point. Let me show you what it does so you can get a better idea. It offsets the position of a tail, so I'm just gonna go in and modify the look a little bit. And because of the multipliers, it moves with the bubble like this. 
So it looks complicated, but in its parts, it's actually pretty simple. One thing I did forget to mention though is an easy way to change the position of the tail if you want to change the look of your bubble. The easiest way is just put a transform between your bubble and your text. Once you have it in place, you can just go to the transform and click on these flip icons to change where your tail is. If you were to add this in after the text, it would flip your text too, and that's not what we want. All right, that's it. You've made your word bubble. If you found this video helpful, don't forget. Do the thing.